time for Blumpkin and Friends, starring your host, the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin. Hey kids, I'm the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin, and with me here today is my old friend, Nani. Nani is here. Oh, we haven't seen each other in like 15 years. Yeah, it was 16, ever since her graduation party Pretty from much. high school. I, yeah. I swear, yeah, sometimes around there. So he's in town for the Thanksgiving holiday, and I'm like, well, get your ass over here. Here's an opportunity to put somebody on the microphone that might otherwise not get involved. And here he is, ta-da. Yep, I made it. So, uh, I would just like to point out that we went to school together from kindergarten through senior year. Pretty much, yeah. But I don't think I really knew who you were until like fourth grade. Right, I didn't know about you until like high school, I guess. I don't know, we never like hung out or anything really until high school, but then... Well, junior high when we uh, everybody had Mr. Hegedorn. Yeah, yeah that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> he had some good classes. Uh, which I might add that uh, that year, which eighth grade, my dad was my basketball coach for the JV1 team. And then you had Mr. Hegedorn for the JV3 team. And because uh, he was a teacher that knew everybody and how good they were... He picked a way better team than my dad did because they did a draft, and we were awful, and you guys were awesome. Yeah, we were undefeated that year until we lost in the playoffs, and that was it. Brutal. Plus, everybody on your team was, like, way taller. My dad picked all these little short shits. I'm like, (laughs) did you even, what, did you think he could have maybe consulted me about who the fuck you were picking? What about (laughs) this guy? Oh, that kid's not going to get to be on the team because he's on academic probation. Way to go. You just wasted a pick. Yeah, I remember after the... Chose the teams or whatever. The coaches chose, like, the three teams that we had for JV. I think there's three of us. Yeah. Uh, he, he asked you, like, in our history class, what do <laughs> Kevin Garnett and Christian Leitner have in common? And I remember your response, they're all a bunch of douchebags. I don't think I knew that word back then. <laughs> I don't know. It stuck with me. I thought it was funny. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about, man? <laughs> ah, we were vicious back then. Everybody was ripping in everybody back then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I get thrown out of Pete Hagedorn's classes a couple times a week, <laughs> but he still liked me for some reason. He's actually my confirmation sponsor too. Was he? Uh, wow, I forgot about that. Mine was my cousin Billy. Oh, fun! <laughs> He's not my cousin anymore because they got divorced. Buddy, shut the fuck up! Always when I'm recording, he feels the need to poop and scratch the wall. Now, from junior high, and I have referenced this on both shows. Let's uh. Since you were there for it too, Brett, the janitor. Yeah, oh yeah. Plenty of weird Brett. Okay, so I've talked about times when I fucked with Brett. Did you ever pull any gags on Brett? I not no, not really. Well, my dad worked with his parents. Yeah. So I had to kinda watch around him because I didn't want to, you know. Get plus I had some kind of compassion for him because he was disabled. Oh. You well know, he wasn't wanted. like that disabled he was just like a little bit slow yeah yeah but it's still you know yeah I, I still reflect fondly upon the time i was in the bathroom and i went in there and he was taking a shit in the stall this is when junior high now so we had those bathrooms that were down the hall and around the corner oh yeah the really nasty ones yeah and uh, and i went in there and he was pooping on the stall i'm like brett you going poop and he's just like fuck you you'd always <laughs> swear at people and uh as i was leaving i flicked the lights off on him and he's like, turn it back on! So I did. And I did it a couple more times just to fuck with him. <laughs> and then I turned the lights off, and I went back to class and left him there in the dark with his pants around his ankles. He was screaming. And because they had those old wooden doors with the fucking air vents for sound to come through, around the corner you could hear, turn it back on! <laughs> he was always just yelling and cussing at God, he was hilarious. I'm surprised he didn't throw any turds at you. Well, first off, he was in the stall and I was using the urinal, so. Christ. You know, uh, a mutual friend of ours, I won't name names, said that he once walked in there and caught Brett sitting on the floor in the stall masturbating. That's pretty nasty. Yeah, well, allegedly it happened. I almost kind of have to believe it because he was always swearing at people and going into kids' lockers. Oh, really? I don't know why I had to do, like, work in the library. It wasn't, like, punishment, but you could do, like, volunteer time to help out in the library. And I was there, and he went into uh, the lockers that were right by the back entrance of the library over by the computer lab. 
I so all around by the third grade classes. And he opens up a locker and he's looking in this book bag. I'm like, Brett, get out of my locker. He goes, fuck you. Like, <laughs> and I watched him and I think he was looking for lunch to eat, like another kid's lunch. <laughs> this is a grown man who I think was in his 30s at the time or late 20s. Yeah. And he's like, fuck you. What grade were you in at this point? Probably seventh or eighth. Oh, all right. Yeah. So, I mean, we were in junior high and he worked there for a number of years. And yeah, as, it was three or four, at least. And as I've brought up, uh, at, looking back now, it was mean that uh, I did those things to him. Not because he was disabled, but I feel bad because he died of cancer. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I caught that from one of your shows. I didn't know that. It was pretty sad. You were the first person I ever knew that had N64. Really? <laughs> yes. That was back in the day. I remember you guys got N64, and I came over to spend the night, and then we didn't get any sleep because we stayed up watching your brother and his friend play Pilot Wings and uh, Mario 64. Oh, yeah, those would be the first games we got for it. Yeah. My memory is, like, fucking impeccable. Mine is not. (laughs) Just down in the basement, and then we're sitting there. And, yeah, your brother didn't let us play much. Uh, Probably not. He never let any... That my friends play it very much, to be honest with you. Nah. Now, as far as any shenanigans in high school that you got into, I know what I got into, but did you get into any? Did you ever get sent to... Niggins, uh, Niggins' office? Yeah. The dean's office? No, I didn't. God damn. I know, it's like once I hit like junior high, I was the biggest shit that you could expect out of anyone in high school that came around, and I think I was just afraid of getting sent to the dean's office or having a talk with Mr. Ferguson or something. Yeah. Mr. Ferguson. They're playing tonight, by the way. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I saw Eden Prairie. 7 o'clock. Uh, Eagles on Eagles. <laughs> Should be a good game. But uh-huh. Eden Prairie's always, you know, top football team in the state, too. Okay. Here's another memory I have. And you may or may not recall this. I told my dad that we were going to go up to the movies at Village 4 up by Kmart. Oh, I remember this. I remember that. <laughs> and when he dropped us off, we waited for him to get around the corner, and then we jogged a mile and a half over uh, to this chick's house that I was seeing, who was Neil's cousin. Yep. And uh, we went over there because her dad was not home, and you were upstairs with her friend, and I was downstairs with her. That was the first time I got any sort of action out of a chick. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Glad I could be a part of it. Yeah. I was downstairs. She's like, oh, I want to put on this movie. And then I just recall distinctly like, okay. Not wh- watching it? <laughs> yeah. I just pulled her into my lap and pulled her shirt up and started playing with her tits. And she's like, whoa, okay. Well, I didn't expect this. <laughs> and, uh. You don't, do you remember what movie you started no, watching? No. I only remember the dirty details because that's what's important. All and right. The movie is really not that important. But we went into her room. That was the first time a chick ever did anything to my wiener. And I almost lost my mind. If I had not had the wherewithal to tell her to stop every so often, I probably would have painted the ceiling and the walls a fresh coat of white. (laughs) From, like, ceiling to floor. I would have whitewashed the whole fucking room. And uh, so at one point, and I was downstairs still, but I guess she came upstairs to the kitchen and started chugging Mountain Dew in front of you and and her chick friend. And her friend's like, uh... You having a good time down there? Well, the reason that she (laughs) was chugging Mountain Dew is because she knobbed me off and then for some reason felt the need to swallow and almost started vomiting on the spot. (laughs) So she ran upstairs to kill the taste to come with Mountain Dew. (laughs) And then, while we were at her house, Neil called my parents' house looking for me just to bullshit. And uh, he blew our cover because he says to my dad, oh, that's right, yeah, he was going to the movies with <laughs> Ouch. And my dad's like, what? So then I had to be like, well, we, we went there and we, we met them to see a movie. You weren't going to let me go to a movie with a girl? What the fuck? They probably thought that I was going to magically get her pregnant just by sitting there sharing a popcorn. <laughs> God knows what. Little do they know that I was off doing all kinds of dirty stuff as a horny 14-year-old boy who became half of a man that night. Well, I don't know how they didn't notice that we weren't at the movie. I mean, we were watching that movie for four hours. It's a four-hour-long movie at that point. I think that's how long we were there for. Yeah, so. we, well, we had to get out. I remember we had to get out of Dodge and jog back quick before her dad got home from work and noticed. So that that's another part is we had to get the fuck out of there before her dad came home. Yeah, all I remember is just sitting on a beanbag chair with that chick's friend and watching the movie Twister. 
I even remember the movie name. <laughs> it's pretty sad, isn't it? No, at least you recall the movie. At least you remember the story. That's that does make me sound like I'm just creating fantastic <laughs> details or shit that didn't happen. Um, also, uh, CAD class in high school. We had CAD class. Yeah, the clock tower. The clock tower. Yeah, that's what you're my partner for. You made the clock tower. I remember we had to design a house, but I don't remember the clock. Well, we had a bunch of different designs. That was our group project. No shit. That was you, me, and shit, right? I don't remember who else was in our group. Ch- I just remember me and you were for sure. Ch- was in there, and I think at one time Tata was in there with us. Oh, all right. I remember him. Uh, okay. Well, one thing about CAD class that I recall, one time we were sitting there, and uh, Ch- he says to me, ah, dude, my nuts hurt. I'm like, what? He's like, my nuts hurt. I'm like, when's the last time that you uh, busted a nut then? He's like, Ugh, Never. <laughs> and he just awkwardly had to admit that he had never apparently masturbated or had had a girl do anything to him. And we're just sitting there. And there were two chicks that were in the class that we were friends with also. Uh, and yep, I remember them too. Huh? Those two. So we were all sitting there and he said that. I'm just like, never? Well, that's your fucking problem. You get, probably should go excuse yourself to the bathroom and go rub one out. <laughs> and aside from that, there there is... Uh, Another infamous story from CAD class, and this is back when I was dating a chick from up north. She missed her period Uh-oh. for like two months without telling me. Holy crap. Yeah, and then I remember her telling me, uh, I, I think I might be pregnant. So I was shitting my pants because I was 16 or 17 at the time, and I thought that I had knocked her up. Yeah, your mom would have killed you, too. Right. <laughs> she would have. You know she would have, too. She would have... Ran and grabbed the hammer right away and been running all over for you, I guess. Oh, Jesus Christ. But I just remember sitting there in class that day. I had to wait all day. The night before, she told me she was going to the doctor to get a pregnancy test. And that all throughout that next day at school, I had to sit there sweating bullets, worrying if she was knocked up. Yeah, that'll make for one stressful day. That fucking day sucked. So we kept coining the phrase, not the daddy, not the daddy, (laughs) in in CAD class and Kept saying that shit too, and uh, but she was saying it because she legitimately hoped that I wasn't gonna fuck up my life with a kid in high school because we already had one girl that we knew in high school that had a kid. No, there's more than one. Well, there was this chick left school freshman year because she had to have an abortion and her parents made her switch schools. I can only think of one other girl in school that got knocked up. Yeah, there was one that was in our grade and one that was in my sister's grade, the grade above us. I forget what uh, I forget what their names are, but. Well, I remember the name of the one in our class. It was, uh... Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. She was, like, new that year, and then she got knocked up. Yeah, right away, too. <laughs> so, back to the, me waiting to find out if she's pregnant. So I agonized all fucking day, wondering if she's knocked up. And then, uh, I get home, and I'm waiting, and then she calls me, and she's like, what's the best thing I could tell you right now? I'm like, that you're not pregnant. She's like, I'm not pregnant! I was like, holy shit! <laughs> oh, it feels like somebody just took 500 pounds off my chest. And uh, and I just remember driving to work that night at Target, where you also ended up working. Yep. I forgot about that. For like a month or two, that was it. Yeah, we worked in the stock room together. So I'm driving to work at Target, and I'm blaring music and honking my horn and like hooting out the fucking window how excited I was that she wasn't knocked up. And the whole reason that she didn't get her period is because she had a thyroid issue. That's when I learned what a goiter was. <laughs> Fucking terrible. Hey, Sipboard. You listen to the Blunkin' and Friends. What what kind of car did your sister have in high school? A uh, little green one. It was a little teal Mitsubishi, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, the Mitsubishi Pressies or something it was called. It wasn't like the uh, the Silver Fox, that old piece of shit car your dad gave you that people threw change at sometimes. Yep. Oh, yeah, whenever I drove it to school. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God, we went to school with some rich dicks. But, uh, well, it's okay. funny because the people throwing the change probably didn't even have a car themselves. So they're... No, they had a car. Uh, they, they were throwing they're... it from their car at your car. I just remember them throwing it like as they were walking out after class. Yeah. And I was driving past them. I didn't care. It was a car. I'm not going to walk the... Was it 15 miles I had to drive? Something to get like to that. school. It was pretty far. I walked home one day. I skipped school to walk home one day. <laughs> and uh, that was 10 miles that I did not realize it was that <laughs> far, and it would take that long. 
And uh, I specifically avoided the North Town area because my mom was working at the Wells Fargo there. I thought that she'd magically see me walking down the shoulder of Highway 10 somehow. Yeah, maybe on her lunch break or something, you never know. I don't. She wouldn't be outside on her lunch break. She'd be inside just making love to the vending machine. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, so I walked. There was a day. I skipped school one time. And I remember getting home and my feet were killing me. And right about the time I got home, my dad called. And he's like, uh, Hi. What's going on? I'm like, uh, I'm sick. He's like, you're sick or you're in trouble? I'm like, probably a little of both. <laughs> He's like, uh, what the hell? I dropped you off at school this morning. I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't want to go today. I, uh, I didn't want to have to go to that stupid pep rally. So I uh, I decided to walk home. He's like, how was that for you? I'm like, it was three and a half hours of hell, but I'm here now. He's like, yeah, okay, well, we'll talk more when I get home, <laughs> which I knew my ass was great. I got a one day... Out of school suspension for that, which it doesn't make sense that I skipped a day. Then you get another day off. And then I get another day off. It's like, oh no, please don't do that, you know. Because like when we were at Epiphany, I had a couple of in-school suspensions. Yeah, I had that one time. Where you just sit in that room in the back of the library that was like a storage closet for like half the day. Yeah, and we had that librarian sitting on me, and Yeah. We're all together, and it's like, that's not the combination of kids (laughs) you want to have in the same room. Oh, shit. That makes sense. You got in tons of trouble. I know the old librarian, she was just a mean old lady, too. Are you talking about Miss Whalen? I, I have no idea what her name was. There was another one that looked like uh, John Denver. That was probably that one, then. <laughs> I always thought she was kind of a lesbian, but who knows. The reason I brought up your sister's car is because before you got a car, sometimes I would score a ride home with you guys. Yep, I remember that. But oh, that... Yeah. That car was the size of, like, a fucking golf cart. Hey, it fit in some pretty tight parking spaces. I guess, but it'd be like, your sister and cow eyes up front. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Who went on to date some player from the Minnesota Wild, apparently. Marion Gabrick. Did she really? Was the, that's what she claims. I thought it was Gabrick, but I wasn't certain. So you got them in the front and us in the back. We're taller than they were, so that was unfair to begin with. And I always was afraid that if, like, we'd hit a 10-speed, we'd burst into flames. <laughs> that car was so fucking tiny. But, now that year, that was sophomore year, was the year that uh, Fly by Sugar Ray came out. I don't remember anything to do with that song I'm, at all. I am telling you because I distinctly remember that when that song came out, it was on the radio constantly on, like, four stations. And your sister used to torture me by station jumping. So we'd hear it on 93X, we'd hear it on KDWB, we'd hear it on fucking KS95, and then I think it might have been on one other station, maybe Rev 105 or something. But she used to fucking torture me with that goddamn song. I'd be like, will you turn this stupid shit off? She's like, no, I love this song. She'd turn it up. <laughs> Probably. Well, that's what some... you got to do when someone says to turn this shit off. You got to turn it up and annoy them even more with it. Isn't that just kind of a rule? That's what I thought was just a rule. It's Well, I was, tra- I was trapped in the back seat of a subcompact car, so it was even worse because like, my knees were half up to my chest. Because <laughs> was all of fucking five foot three, but felt the need to jack the seat all the way back just to piss me off. So if it wasn't Sugar Ray's Fly... It was fucking uh, Everlast. Oh, yeah. The what Mighty like. Ford sings, sings the blues. Yes. Oh, my God. That year, the music was killing me being stuck in the backseat of that goddamn car. But your sister, just because she had to fuck with me mercilessly. <laughs> yeah, we drove that car to the state fair one year, and there was a parking spot that no other car would have fit in. There was yeah. like, literally like two inches on both sides of the car. How the hell did you get out? Through the back door, like the little hatchback it had on the back of it. <laughs> All four of us that were in there climbed out of the back of it, and we're like, oh, good to go. That's awesome. And unless you're one of the people in the other cars. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, (laughs) They couldn't even, like, door ding you back for fucking pinning them in there. There's no room to open up the door that far, even. All right, fuck you, buddy. Okay, so I was at my parents' house uh, before I came back home. I dropped the girls off to hang out there while you came over. She mentioned to me... And we'll see if you recall any of this. Going to prom in Pine City. I It was not prom, I don't think. I Wasn't thought, it? I thought it was homecoming. Was it? 
Because I don't think we got like all dressed up or anything like that for oh, it. We, we did. Did we? We did. You like that? Okay, so we spent the night at my girlfriend's house. Yep. And I had to sleep in a sleeping bag on the floor of her room. And in the next room was the family room. Her dad slept on the couch. No, I think her dad slept on the floor. And That's he... what I fucking told her. She's like, my dad wouldn't sleep on the floor. Is it an air mattress or something? But yeah, it was me and a <laughs> that were on the couch. My mom brought it up. I'm like, I remember that. But as I started going through my mind, I'm like, oh my God, I remember this now. Her dad woke up and caught you guys making out. But he didn't say anything. Oh, right on. I didn't know he even caught us. Yes. He says he woke up and he looked and you guys were fooling around. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Which is pretty ballsy that there's a, an adult right there. I didn't care. I was, what, 17? <laughs> yeah. It didn't matter to me. <laughs> I was Well, I was in the next room with her and at some point uh, I woke her up and we got it on on the floor on my sleeping bag via lamplight. <laughs> and pretty I, romantic. Why not? Yeah, on the floor of a fucking cold basement bedroom with very thin carpeting, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I just... Boy, it must have been homecoming because it was cold. That makes more sense than it being prom and it being warm in the spring. Yeah, I don't remember getting all dressed up for it, but... Well, I went to a I went to a Pine City prom, let me tell you. There was a long stage for the uh, procession to come in where they introduced you, and I was doing, like, these weird fucking stupid parade waves. <laughs> that's, that's Pine City for you, but goddamn... So that is true. I'll have to tell my mom that you admitted to that one. Uh, you, can, you can probably leave that out of the conversation you're going to have with her ah, later on. That's, that's fine. That's fine with me, man. I didn't mention to her that I was screwing <laughs> in the next bedroom <laughs> with her dad, you know, 15 feet away. Which I have always said that danger is sexy. And that's why when you're a teenager, it's so fun to get it on like that because you, you're afraid you're going to get caught. But that added element of danger makes it way hotter. Well, it was dad, though, too. It wasn't the right. girl. I was, it wasn't her dad, so I don't right. know if he even cared if I did stuff with well, the dad <laughs> chick right in front of him. He's, he's probably like, fucking really? Right in front of me? Really? <laughs> I'm sleeping two feet away from you bastards. And what's he going to say? Uh, can you guys knock that off, please? You know, uh, he's not going to kick us out. We're just in high school, you know? Uh, make you go sleep out in your car. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Your car, uh-huh. actually. I think it was your car up yeah, there. Yeah, it was the Dumpy Mobile. It was the old 88 LeSabre. With the baseball bat? With the With the nails, nails sticking out of it uh, that I made? Yeah, I made a homemade spiked baseball bat. I remember what it was called, but I'm not going to say it. The Love Stick. All right. That's not bad. I thought I thought you called it something else. No, I called it the Love Stick. And someone's like, why would you call it the Love Stick? I'm like, because if I'm hitting you with this thing, I'm sharing the love. Ah. <laughs> uh, you're killing me, Smalls. I'm just going to throw out some random high school memories because we went to Tatino Grace and it was a Catholic school. There was a pep rally where our friend Big Kev was supposed to partake in a pie eating contest. And because we were so mean shouting at the seniors, Mr. Niggin disqualified us. Kevin had not eaten in a day and a half because <laughs> he was trying to prep himself to be so hungry to just devour pie, and they wouldn't even let him have any goddamn pie. And he's just sitting there like, oh, my God, dude, are you fucking serious? I don't remember. That's funny. Oh, God, he was so pissed. He's like, he was weak with hunger complaining at lunchtime midway through the day. He's like, oh, my God, I'm so fucking hungry. I cannot wait to eat this goddamn pie. And then we get there. And we're shouting back and forth with the seniors. He's like, you guys are disqualified. He's like, God damn it. Poor guy. And he was like six foot six or seven too. So, I mean, he, it took yeah, a lot of Yeah, he was a tall dude. Yeah, he was a tall dude. There was another time he got in trouble. And uh, it was him and somebody else. You remember the school song? The fight song? Nope. <laughs> maybe maybe not like you could hum it, but you know, we had a school song. I know we had a school song. I have no idea anything to I have no idea what had anything had to do with it. I'm yet. trying to find it on the internet so I can play it in the out credits for after I edit the episode. And during our school fight song, there's a part where it's like, da, 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 go Eagles! Well, they didn't say go Eagles. Kevin and somebody else got caught chanting, suck my cock! <laughs> Which at a Catholic school they kind of frown upon. Ah, oh, and get, Throw out some memories of high school you might have. No oh, matter how shit, stupid. Not much. I... 
You didn't get into trouble. No, I didn't. I did one time for not tucking my uniform in. Oh, pfft. Yeah. That's, that's, what do they say, tuck in your shirt and go to class? Oh, that was for that religion teacher that we had. I forgot what her name was. Mrs. Broadhead? No, Broadhead was an English teacher, wasn't she? No, no. She's the religion teacher that would not shut up about abortion because oh, she was I so heard. militantly pro-life. But I just remember, like, I remember her because she had a broad head. Like, her forehead was, like, broad. <laughs> yeah, it was ironic. Um, you, I don't think you were in the same class as me for her. But, like, and, uh, and were. She brought in this lady that worked at an abortion clinic to drive home the point of how bad it can be working there. And this lady came in, and she was, like, stone sober-faced. Like, I work at the abortion clinic, and it's my job to go through after the abortion, make sure that we have all the baby parts. I have to put together all the tissue to make sure that we've got everything so we don't have to go back in and do another DNC. I would, I would like to be excused to go to the commons because I don't want to listen to this. <laughs> no crap. Yeah, she brought in... This was all of about two days after in his infinite wisdom. Uh, we were discussing not having an abortion even if you were raped. And here's his argument. Well, no, like, what if you're raped by a bear? <laughs> and she's like, what? What if you get raped by a bear? You know, and you're going to... And she's like, I'm, I'm not even going to answer that. I'm not... I looked at him like, are you serious? Raped by... What, are you afraid you're going to have like a, a half bear, half baby? You're going to have a man bear pig? You're going to birth a man bear pig. He's like, oh, you could get like raped by a bear. And then you'd, you'd have to have an abortion because it's going to be like a weird mutant baby. You missed out on some times in that class by having... Yeah, I guess. ...different uh... session. Holy Christ. Yeah, high school was just boring for me. I didn't play sports. I didn't do anything. I was just kind of there to get in and get out pretty much, you know. Uh, I have a surprise for you. It's time to play Guess Who Karaoke Roulette. Guess Who Karaoke Roulette. This is not going to go well for me. The game is I pick one famous person. I have five clues. I will read them off to you. You get three chances to guess who it is, or if you get all the way to the end and you think you know it for certain, you can trade two of your guesses for one extra clue to get you over the hump. All right. I hate this stupid game. Clue number one. Born April 18th, 1963 in Toronto, Canada. Yeah, you might want to wait beyond the first clue to take a guess at it, huh? Clue number two. Began his career in 1976 as a Canadian radio DJ. Clue number three. Member of the Canadian comedy TV show SCTV with Dave Thomas. Clue number four. Retired from acting. Retired air quotes. He took a hiatus after the death of his wife from breast cancer. Any of this ringing a bell yet? I'm Howard Stern. Strike one. Mm. Howard Stern's not Canadian. I don't know. <laughs> He's a radio DJ. Uh, clue number five. This number five is usually the softball and gives it away. Notable roles include he played characters called Bob McKenzie, Lewis Tully, Dark Helmet, Seymour Krelborn, and Wayne Zielinski. I have no idea. Okay, well, you could you could tra- I will let you trade your last two guesses for one more clue. And this clue is going to pretty much give it away. All right, I'll take the extra clue, but I still don't think I'm going to get it. Bonus clue. I will throw this out. Honey, I shrunk the kids. Rick Moranis? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. high five. Good job. You Good, because I was pretty sure you didn't want to have to get caught singing anyway. Because that's what happens if uh, if you lose. I can always just get up and walk away. I don't have to sing. I suppose you could. <laughs> Nobody's done that yet. That would be a colossal dick move that I'd have to kind of just roll with the punches about. That's but, all right. I haven't seen you for 16 years anyway. So. Right. Like, thanks for the fun time. Fuck off. <laughs> pretty much. Oh, all right. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah. Now. Yeah, I'm going to. I wonder if it's recording this. Oh, man, this song sucks. (laughs) 
Yeah, it does suck. Because guess what? Now I'm going to fucking sing this song. I'm going to sing that song. Because that's what I do, is poor karaoke covers. I'll leave that up to you. Right. Well, I'm just going to turn this. Yeah, I'm going to scroll down. Ah, and because you haven't seen me for close to two decades, why would I not karaoke in front of you? Because, you know, it's got to be it's got to be a memorable experience. I have to unbutton my shirt. I get a little sweaty when I start singing. <laughs> Gets a little warm from the nurse. <clears throat> All right. So in honor of your sister torturing me in the back of that goddamn little teal Mitsubishi. No, it's uh, called the Emmer. The Emmer? Uh, the Emmer looked like a peanut M&M. That's why we named, nicknamed it the Emmer. Kind of reminds me of the Mirthmobile from Wayne's World. <laughs> yeah, that was probably a little nicer than the Emmer, I think. So I'm going to sing Sugar Ray's Fly. Kind of. All around the world, statues crumble for me. Who knows how long I've loved you? Everywhere I go, people stop and they see. 25 years old, my mother got arrested, so I just want to fly. Put your arms around me, baby. Put your arms around me, baby. I just want to fly. Put your arms around me, baby. Put your arms around me, baby. <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker. Dance a little stranger. Show me where you've been. Love can make you hostage. Wanna do it again. There's no time to think about the starting or the end. We'll find out, I'm told. My mother, she told me so. I just want to fly. Put your arms around me, baby. Put your arms around me, baby. I just want to fly. Put your arms around me, baby. Put your arms around me, baby. Here comes a big one. I just want to fly. And that's all you get. It is all you get. It's everything. That was painful. It can be at times. And now, story time with number one fan, Tim. So I'm about 12 years old and I had a really good friend. She was a girl, but I mean, she wasn't like pretty or anything. She was just a friend. Well, I went over to her house one day after watching one of my dad's pornos called Miami Spice. And in that video, like the undercover cop girl got caught by the bad guy and he wanted to check her for a wire. Sounds sexy. So he takes her panties off and it's like spread your legs and she spreads her legs and uh, she's got that 80s bush, you know, just. That's more or less 70s bush. Well, this is porno was made in the 80s. I mean, this, I don't know, maybe it was made in the 70s, but it was, it was old. Anyway, so she got Bush, and he kind of, like, spreads her lips out, and he's feeling around in there and everything, and I'm just like, I wonder what that's like. So I go over to this girl's house, and I'm talking to her and all that, and I'm being more friendly with her and everything than I normally am. Okay, so you basically just wanted to see what the inside of a vagina felt like. Yeah. But I knew I wasn't going to just be able to walk up to her and be like, hey, uh, can I stick my fingers in you? Oh, I'm pretty sure that because of her being kind of a portly gal, you could have pulled that off. There's some women that you Maybe. just know. that You'd be like, hey, um, I want to know what a clit looks like. You think I can just take a peek real quick just to see if I can? Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm trying to prove to myself they exist. So, um, you know, I'm just kind of digging around the room and I found a rubber glove like for food prep. And so... <laughs> Why? Why was that there? I, I don't know. That's a random object. She had a bunch of weird shit in her room. Anyway, so I put the glove on her, you know, and I'm kind of like unzipping her pants. She's like, what are you doing? I says, well, I kind of wanted to try something. She's like, oh, okay. So we, I pulled her pants down a little ways and uh, 
with the one hand that didn't have a glove, I kind of spread her a little bit. And I just kind of, with the gloved hand, I was kind of fingering around in there. I'm just like, huh. That's Did different. she have an 80s bush, as you called it? Um, Yeah, because I think we were 12 and shaving. It wasn't really popular bush. Gross. Kids our age. That sounds gross. How did that smell? It it smelled okay, you know. And it didn't smell like fish, but okay. it didn't smell like a warm summer night breeze or anything, you know. It's Does any vagina smell like a warm summer night's breeze? Mrs. Number One fans does. What does she do? Douche with Febreze? I don't know. It just smells nice. A warm summer night's breeze. <laughs> so, so I'm just kind of feeling around, and I don't know if she was getting aroused or anything. I mean, it just, but that's what I was doing. And I was probably doing that for a good five minutes with her parents just right in the other room and all that. And then when I got done, I just pulled up, like, okay, and I took the glove off and threw it in the garbage can and <laughs> pulled her pants up and. That was kind of the end of that, and after that, I never, ever did anything like that with her again. Didn't never even kissed her. And, well, no, I did once, but that was like way later. Was it a pity kiss? Um, it was more like a who kisses better, her or this other girl, because they were both there. I hung out with this girl a lot. I mean, like huh. but twelve it, and thirteen years old. That's the thing about when you're young and you're just playing with a vagina for the first time. You don't really know what you're doing. You don't even know what you're feeling for because you've never been up in there before. I, I just remember like one spot. I'm just like it keeps my finger keeps going in. It like it right. was all the way up to my my what's that your second knuckle? Yeah, how's that feel? I remember the first time I played with a vagina, and uh, it's Neil's cousin, by the way. <laughs> and I just remember going in there, and um, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I didn't, I just thought that once you were, like, beyond the lips, you were in, right? I didn't realize that there's the lips, and then there's, like, a hole, and then you go in there. And I felt like I went through, like, two or three different holes. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm <laughs> you're like, all Jesus the way up Christ, there. I was me- mesmerized slash horrified slash very intrigued. I'm like, I don't know See, where this is going. See, mine was intriguing. It was just, like, what they do in that video. Now, no, you know. You know, once you get to play with pussies, you should make that kind of come here hooking motion mm-hmm. with oh, your yeah. finger. But when you first play with a pussy, you just stick your finger in there. You're kind of like moving around. Kind of like in, know what out, you're doing. in, out, in, out. Yeah. You don't know what to do. Playing with a vagina when you're uneducated, it's a fucking train wreck. It's poor girls that get their pussies played with for the first time by guys who are playing with one for the first time. That's a horrible combination. She doesn't know what she wants. You don't know what she needs. She's just kind of laying there and going, oh, okay, this, this, this is new and then you're down inside her. me. So, do you like it? Yeah. And she's is, like, is that good? Um, yeah, I suppose. Maybe that's why girls back when I was that age always liked older guys, because they actually knew one or two things. Too bad your brother didn't give you any pointers on that. No, he didn't really. Oh, my God. It would have been better if he would have lied to you, as a lot of brothers will do. They'll tell you just complete fallacies. And then you go in there with so much misinformation that you totally screw it up. I like, suppose if I'd actually gone and asked him, he probably would have because he was an addictive like that back yeah, then. Yeah, son of a bitch. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. You, you, you don't want to put it in the lips here. you got to go a little further back towards the butt. Oh. <laughs> well, you were wearing a glove. Ah. Uh. Ow. Interact with the show on Twitter at Blumpkin Show. That is at Blumpkin Show. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash Blumpkin and friends. I'm the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin. I am Manny. Good night. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a girl in a comfort on. And if you throw a party and you invited everyone you knew, you would see the greatest it would be for me. And the God attached would say, Thank you for fucking and friends. <laughs>